I finally wrapped up studying mechanical engineering for the past four years. And about halfway through there in my sophomore year, I had a set of fiberglass fender flares that I installed on the Jeep. I had the front and rear bumpers that had Linux on them. And then I also had the um, fiberglass hood that I had on my Jeep. So I definitely was interested in painting or wrapping my Jeep uh, for a while. And I actually had a job at Linex when I decided to go with Raptor Liner. So if you're like me and you like to do everything yourself, there's really only three options. And those three options aside from Linex is gonna be your Raptor Liner or your similar copycat brand. There's a lot of companies that copy Raptor Liner. There's your Roll-On Liner and that's gonna be like Monster Liner. And then there's your store, auto parts store brand, uh, Rust-Oleum Bed Liner. Each one of those has its own benefits, has its negatives, um, but the roll-on stuff, it typically has one texture. You can use whatever texture you get from the roller. And I noticed that there's a lot of inconsistencies in the paint. I see a lot of people who've done it at shows. And in my opinion, it's just so easy to get whatever texture you like by just going with Raptor liner from the start using their very nozzle professional gun. You could adjust the texture. You can adjust the air pressure at the gun and you can also adjust the distance to the surface in which you're painting to get different textures. Lastly, before I get into coating the Jeep, I just wanna put a disclaimer out there that for this video, it's basically gonna be me prepping everything to be sprayed first with their epoxy primer, which is their primer specifically formulated to work perfectly with Raptor liner uh, and then Raptor lined after. So it's a long one. This is three videos kind of put into one. I'm gonna shorten it and try and make it, you know, as easy to watch as possible. I hope it's easy to watch. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it. Just like so many other Jeep owners, I do like to pretend that I have a little bit of control over the rust that is completely taking over my Jeep. So I worked a little bit on these rocker panels uh, just on this side because that's what the Raptor liner was gonna touch. And I coated it with navel jelly just so it wouldn't rust uh, when I moved to the next steps. I cleaned the surface with a degreaser that wasn't diluted or anything. You wanna make sure it's strong because it has to remove everything that had been applied to the surface beforehand. When I removed my fender flares and the tail lights in the back, there was some leftover residue from the adhesive. So I'm just taking a wire brush to that. And this won't show through in the Raptor liner, which is pretty cool. Um, you're able to prep it as normal after. Like I said, I'm preparing this in preparation for Raptor's anti-corrosive epoxy primer. So I'm attacking the surfaces with 180 grit sandpaper. But if you look at the technical data sheet, if you have factory e-coat, you can just use a red scuff pad to properly prepare the surface before spraying the epoxy primer. No matter what you use to scuff the surface, what's important is that it looks like this in the end. You don't want any gloss showing through. You want a good mechanical adhesion for the paint after. Sending everything down might leave you with some rust spots like these. And so I switched over to 80 grit sandpaper and I'm just making sure I get all of the rust off before I move ahead to the primer. It's best to use a sandblaster if you can. That's by far the most effective way to remove all of the rust from the pitting. Uh, as you can see here, I did find that there was some previous body work that I wasn't aware of, uh, which probably caused the rust. I'm just cleaning the surface with U-Pole's number six wipe. That's just their prep spray, uh, blowing it dry, and then I'm gonna shoot it with U-Pole's acid edge primer because it is a bare metal area and I wanna keep it rust free before I shoot the entire car with their epoxy primer. You could coat this in oil or with the navel jelly that I used before. I had this on hand and it's a little bit more of a foolproof solution. Uh, we're gonna do that to all the bare metal spots and you'll see me use a lot of the aerosols from U-Pole. They actually updated these uh, with Raptor branding pretty recently. Finally, moving on to some of the more interesting stuff here. Uh, prepping for the primer, I'm just blowing off the surface to get all of the dust from sanding off and then I'm gonna shoot the entire Jeep in this prep spray. I'm gonna wipe down the entire Jeep, make sure that there's nothing getting in the way from perfect adhesion between the current e-coat and the Raptor primer. While it may seem overkill, I'm gonna take a tack cloth and I'm gonna wipe the entire Jeep down in one of these. They're just 
wax infused cloths that are gonna pick up any last traces of contaminants that are on the surface. All right, here is Raptor's anti-corrosive epoxy primer kit, which comes with the gallon as well as the hardener. Opening the gallon of primer, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is mix it up until it is one uniform color, uh, which you'll see here, it's just a gray color. And once you see that, it's ready to go. Using a paint strainer, pour the primer and the hardener into this and just make sure that you mix it four to one by volume. So it doesn't matter how much you use, just make sure it's at that ratio. Also, you're gonna wanna do your best not to spill. This was pretty tough to get off the table and it was just a little bit tough to film and pour this at the same time. For this project, I'm using U-Pulse Gravity Fed HVLP gun. For the primer, you can use anywhere from a 1.4 to 1.8 millimeter tip and anywhere between 50 to 65 PSI. A lot of guns like this one have adjustable material flow, adjustable airflow, and adjustable fan patterns. So make sure you test it out before you spray your vehicle or whatever else you're spraying. Raptor liner can be applied to Raptor's epoxy primer in an hour or up to seven days. So regardless of if you wanna shoot Raptor liner right after, or if you wanna wait a week, uh, you're not gonna to have to scuff the surface and you can apply it wet on wet if that's what you wanna do. Flash off between each coat is 10 to 15 minutes at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe it was a little bit hotter here, but I did two coats of the Raptor epoxy primer and I waited eight hours as instructed to fill it with body filler and some of the dents that I had after. Before I did this, I obviously read the instructions and when I read it can go wet on wet, I did not expect the final product to look this good. It's so smooth that when I posted it in the Facebook groups, people thought this was the actual color that I painted my Jeep when obviously it's just the primer. With it primed, I went around the vehicle and circled any obvious dents like this, took U-Pulse guide coat and then sanded it to reveal exactly where the dent is and where I need to apply body filler. Finishing that up with 80 grit sandpaper, we wanna make sure that the body filler is going to adhere as well as possible. So I'm just cleaning it up now with the prep and then blowing it dry. I'll be using U-Pulse rapid system body filler and glaze. It's nice to stay in the same ecosystem with U-Pulse and Raptor liner just because you know it's all compatible and you're gonna get very good adhesion between each product. Mixing up the body filler, I'm gonna scoop out however much I thought I needed for that dent. There were a couple other dents, but I didn't wanna make this video any longer, so I'm just showing you how to fix the single dent and then I tackled the other dents off camera.
To get the right amount of hardener, which is 2% by volume, just spread it a half of the way or two thirds of the way across the puddle and mix it avoiding any air bubbles until it is one color and you can't see any more red. Again, to avoid introducing any air into the body filler, press down pretty firmly into the dent as you're applying the body filler evenly over the dent. I understand if you're confused as to why I'm doing all this body work before shooting my Jeep with a bed liner, but for anyone looking to shoot their vehicle with Raptor liner, when it's reduced and spraying with an HVLP gun to get a really fine texture, any dents or deep scratches are gonna show through just like they would in a normal paint. So doing all of this is gonna prevent that for people looking to shoot it in that way. With the filler sanded down smooth with 80 grit sandpaper, I went back to the onion board, ripped off a sheet and made room for the rapid system glaze. Glaze is often used over body filler to reduce the chances of pinholes in the finished product, which is usually caused by air bubbles trapped in the body filler. Using the same ratio of 2% by volume, we're gonna mix in the hardener and again, get it so where we don't see any red and it's one uniform color. Apply the glaze with the same method that you use for the body filler using downward force to avoid air bubbles. Finish smoothing this off with whatever grit sandpaper the next step calls for. So look at the technical data sheet if it's Raptor liner or Raptor epoxy primer, depending on what step you took first. Raptor liner can be purchased in the one liter kit shown there or the gallon kit. Raptor liner liter kits are definitely a little bit more self-explanatory when it comes to mixing, but if you are using the gallon kit like I am, just make sure you mix the Raptor liner to hardener in a three to one ratio. With the Raptor liner and the hardener in the bottle, grab the cap, twist it on, and shake it until it is thoroughly mixed. I mean, shake this thing until you feel like you've been mixing it for too long, and then shake it some more. Depending on the texture you're looking for, adjust the PSI at the gun between 40 and 60 PSI. To finally adjust the texture of Raptor liner on the surface, I'm using Raptor liner's professional very nozzle gun, and I'm adjusting the tip at four turns from fully open. Depending on how thick you want the product, you can apply one or two coats. Uh, you could do more, but if you're applying two coats, wait 60 minutes between each coat, and if you're applying any more than two coats, because the product is so thick, you're gonna to wanna to wait 24 hours, take a red scuff pad, and then scuff up the surface, clean it, and then apply your third coat. And then you could wait another 60 minutes, apply the fourth coat, and then so on and so forth. Definitely take your time with this, as when I was priming, I'm speeding up certain parts of this to two and a half times its original speed. So it does look like I'm going slow regardless, but I am taking my time, making sure I'm getting even coverage and I'm overlapping just a little bit and making sure everything is fully coated.
The best piece of advice that I can give you is when you're spraying your second coat after waiting that hour, take note of how you sprayed the first coat and you can see here I'm spraying left to right or right to left. So for the second coat, I'm gonna spray up and down and I'm gonna do that to the entire Jeep. Make sure to remove any masking paper and masking tape that is on an edge that connects to where Raptor liner is, especially if you sprayed it on really thick, you're gonna wanna remove the masking tape before it fully cures so you don't risk pulling some of the Raptor liner off with the tape. Now we're gonna get to everything that I pulled off of the Jeep to get it ready for paint, which is everything plastic and fiberglass. And we're gonna start off with the fiberglass fender flare. So this part of the video is gonna tell you how to properly repair and paint fiberglass for the epoxy primer and then Raptor liner. According to the technical data sheet, Raptor's epoxy primer calls for 180 grit to 220 grit sandpaper to be used on fiberglass. And like I said before, you want the surface to look like this, fully sanded and no gloss showing through. For places like the inside of the fender flare, where it's really hard to promote a good mechanical grip, uh, you just can't fit a piece of sandpaper in there. There's gonna be a few places like this. We're gonna wanna use an adhesion promoter. After cleaning and blowing out the inside of the hard to reach surface, we're gonna take the adhesion promoter and just spray it inside of the fender flare. We're gonna do two coats of this and wait 10 minutes between each coat to ensure that the epoxy primer is gonna stick as well as it can to those places that we couldn't get sandpaper to. From here on out, preparing the surface of the fiberglass is the exact same as it was when I prepared the body of the Jeep. So we're gonna spray it down wipe it down, get the tack cloth, make sure there's no contaminants on the surface before I prime it, prime it, and then spray it with Raptor liner. I cannot stress this enough that Raptor liner and the epoxy primer are tough coatings and you're gonna wanna make sure that you properly take care of the equipment when you're done using it. So take it all apart, wash it with the appropriate chemicals and make sure that it's good to go for the next project. When I primed my fender flares, I had to go back to college for a couple months and when I came back home, I was ready to line it. So I took the red scuff pad shown there and then I just scuff the surface of the primer to get it ready for Raptor liner. Now I have no idea how I missed this after I painted the body of my Jeep, but make sure that you clean the inside of your guns. Shooting the solvent through it after is not enough. As you can see here, the tip is clogged. The material flow is not gonna be as strong as you need it to be if it's in this condition.
Now we're wrapped up with the fiberglass and the body of the Jeep. We're moving on to everything else that was made out of plastic. So we have flexible plastic here, which goes inside of my rear wheel wells. And then we're also gonna have rigid plastic and prep does vary between the two. For plastic, we're gonna skip the epoxy primer altogether and we're gonna spray Raptor liner directly to the prepped plastic. If you take a look at the technical data sheet for Raptor liner, you'll see that it does separate flexible and rigid plastic when it comes to prep. For the rigid plastic like we have here, we're gonna hit it with 120 to 180 grit sandpaper. Especially on something like this that's chrome, make sure it's prepped really well and there's no shiny spots left over after sanding. On flexible plastic like this, we're gonna hit it with 180 to 320 grit sandpaper. For the fender flares, we use the adhesion promoter on the inside for the hard to reach areas that we couldn't really hit with sandpaper. But on plastic, you're gonna wanna use the adhesion promoter all over, regardless of what type of plastic, regardless of the shape, you're gonna wanna use adhesion promoter on the entire thing. And we're gonna hit it with two coats, 10 minutes between each coat. Both the rigid and flexible plastic are both prepared with their respective sandpaper sprayed clean and then sprayed with the adhesion promoter. So they're ready to go for Raptor liner and it's all pretty much the same for here. You're gonna spray it in two coats, hour between each coat, and we're gonna use the same texture that we did for the body as well as for the fender flares. All right guys, so the Jeep, it came out great. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the Jeep didn't get done without mistakes or anything. So in the next video, I'm gonna kind of post what my biggest mistakes were and they're definitely on like a case to case basis. I don't think like everyone's gonna be kind of facing the things that I faced. So it's not like it was, you know, needed to be in this video and this video was already really long. So I'd rather just kind of make like the top five mistakes that I made um, in bedlining my Jeep. But a serious big thank you to my family. They were a huge help in doing this. Uh, my mom helped me film and my dad bought me a carport uh, so I could do it when it was raining. And um, yeah, so they were a huge help. Huge thank you to U-Pole and Raptor Liner. Uh, I couldn't be happier with the way this thing turned out. I'm gonna probably recode it again to kind of patch up some of the mistakes and I'll show that later. But I'll definitely be using Raptor uh, for a ton of things later on, so. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, check my Instagram for more pictures of it if you're interested and comment uh, any questions you might have. So thank you so much.